is up guys. Tonight we're going to be trying something a little bit different here on the channel. We're going to call this segment Slip Angle Insight. And this is a segment where we answer your questions, either myself, Matt, or Ryan, based on whatever the question is and whose area of expertise it falls within. But tonight we're going to answer one of the most common questions that I get and that is which car would you pick? Your AP1 S2000 or your ITV NB Miata? So, this is obviously a very loaded question and you know you obviously see the answer that I chose both but we're going to kind of break down the pros and cons of each and maybe that will help you guys who are shopping one of these or cross shopping them in your decision making process. So to begin let's start with the outside and we'll work our way all the way into the inside and down to the drivetrains. From an aesthetic standpoint personally I've always liked the look of the S2000 better. I think it's a much more aggressive car. It's a little bit more manlier looking. Not that the NB isn't, is as girly as say, I think the older Miatas. I think the NB hat can be a little bit more muscular. Uh, a hard top, a little bit of uh, front bumper stuff, canards and a lip kind of really set it apart. But um, the look of the S2000 is what always like really, really attracted me to the cars. Um, I love them with a hard top. As you can see, I have a Mugen style, which kind of makes it have a little bit more of like a fastback traditional sports car look. I'm a big fan of the front end of this car from its very aggressive headlights to the very bulging telescoping fenders here. It almost looks like kind of like a stingray when you're looking at it from the hood front on. The NV has got more soft, subtle lines, so in the looks department, I'm going to give the win here to the S2000. Um, while we're out here, we'll talk. We'll just jump into the suspension. We'll make this a little bit technical for those of you guys who really want to know. Both cars use double wishbones or double A arms. Um, they're very similar in their handling characteristics. Where I would say the S2000 is a little bit more of an anxious, nervous car. but the S2000 also feels a little bit more immediate and on its turning. Now with that said, suspension tuning and setup dictates completely how the car is going to behave. So you can really kind of make both of these cars behave in a very similar fashion, depending on what your alignment is and, and, and everything else. Um, I run very similar alignments on both of these and that usually consists of more front camber than in the rear. So the S2000 is negative two four in the front and I wanna say I'm at negative one six in the rear. Um, the NV Miata, I couldn't do quite as much uh, at, at, at much of a, a split from front to rear. So the camera front to rear is like a, a closer match. I think I'm negative two, three front and like negative two, somewhere around that in the rear. As I lowered the car, uh, there was just an inherent camera gain that I couldn't adjust out with the eccentrics. Both suspensions are fully adjustable as far as camera and caster goes right out of the box, which is something that's really cool. And that's one of the, the other benefits of a double AM car. Um, so in the, in the suspension department, I'm gonna say they're both kind of equal. I think the S2000 can be set up to achieve a little bit more grip, ultimate grip, but I, I can't say that for sure because I haven't actually really tried to do that with either, but I've seen S2000 pull some very high numbers on the, on the skid pad. Um, as far as ease at the limit, I'm gonna give the nudge to the Miata. The Miata is an easier car to drive at the limit. It's a much more forgiving car, especially when you're talking stock versus stock. Um, both of these cars are pretty well tailored to my driving needs, but I will say that the S2000 is, a, is an edgier car when you get to that limit of grip. So as soon as that car transitions into oversteer, it's gonna snap a little bit more. So you have to be more on your game to like catch that slide. Dare I say that you almost have to saw the wheel a little bit more on the S2000 and that's, and that's a lot of weight of, a result of how Honda engineered it. The Miata is definitely more progressive, more blissful, even though it's a shorter, a slightly shorter wheelbase car than the S2000. So in terms of grip, I'm gonna say they're both equally capable. In terms of at the limit uh, behavior and balance, I'm gonna give the, the win to the Mazda and the Miata. So moving along, let's talk about the interiors of these cars. Um, one of the very alluring things with like I, why I sweated over an S2000 for so long was the interior. I'm a big fan of the cabin. It's a very minimalist looking dash. 
I think it's very period correct for the time that this came out in. I like the big center console that gives you separation from you and your passenger. All the driver equipment is, is, is in front of you. There's really not much for the passenger to look at, but that is to me, the inherent characteristics of a true driver's car. I love the digital dashboard. A lot of people would say that this is very outdated now, um, but I love that, that it's inspired from Air Incentives Formula One car. I'm gonna, I know we're trying to show this on camera, but it's not on, so we're not gonna see anything. Um, but it's inspired from Air Incentives Formula One car, and I think that's something that's really, really neat. The, um, the seating position in the S2000 stock versus stock against the Miata is a little bit lower. And I like that. I would say like most Japanese cars, they do sit a little bit high stock, but with aftermarket seating solutions, you can get like hunkered down a little bit lower. The S2000's driving position is like truly, truly one of the best stock as far as like pedal placement and gearbox. It's really surrounded for a true driver's car. I'm gonna show you that right now. So when I pop in here, um, the pedal placement, let's come around over here, is, is damn near spot on perfect for heel toe and you can see this here like it doesn't take much to roll your foot over to heel toe for your downshifts the steering wheels properly placed stock it's a little bit far forward but so is the miata any japanese sports cars they're often like that but the gear lever is up a little bit higher where it's a little bit lower in the miata so your arm is actually kind of going down a little bit further in the miata this to me is almost damn near perfect for a driver's car and I absolutely love it. Steering wheel's properly centered, it's not offset all stupid. And um, I just love the cabin. I like sitting in a sports car below the door panel line a little bit. I know some people don't like this, they really wanna see over the hood, but when I'm in the S2000, I, I have the lines where the, where the front wheels are in my head from years of autocrossing. So that's not a big deal to me, but um, I just think that this is a proper sports car seating position. Now, with that said, I was able to achieve that in the Miata, but it took a little bit more effort and I had to go with uh, a different aftermarket seating solution. So we'll walk on over here. As far as like stock versus stock, the interiors, I think they're both beautiful in their own way. I actually really like the NV Miata's stock interior. Um, there's a ton of aftermarket support for these things and as if you guys have followed this car you see that I got the seats I got a lot of green stitching accents throughout it um, just the whole layout of it is a very proper looking there's no fancy electronics or anything in it but it, it's a simple but elegant like sports car design um, so I do actually like like the NB Miata interior quite a bit as well I'm gonna say like between the both of them I'm gonna give the edge to the s2000 mostly because the the seating position and the pedal placement and the gearbox placement are just a little bit more proper um, when you and, and you feel even though the s2000 cabin is still snug and tight it doesn't feel like you're driving as small of a car which you're not I do feel like I'm a little bit Mickey Mouse when I'm when I'm driving the NB as much as I hate to say it now these seats are Lotus Lee seats, so these drop you quite a bit. Um, I'm well below the roof line, and I know you're not gonna be able to really see it, but my hand right here is touching the roll bar. So this is like kind of my natural seating position in this car. I'm well below the roll bar, which is, which is essential. Um, there is no rollover protection in the NA and the NB chassis Miata. So that's, that's something to be said about the S2000's chassis. Um, the S2000, the, wind, the windshield frame is reinforced, so that acts as rollover protection. There's a, there's a thick steel bar in here that will not collapse in the event of a rollover, plus you have factory rollover hoops. In a Miata, you're gonna die if you roll over because everything's gonna squish and so are you. But you can see in the seating position that I'm in right here, uh, I am higher up towards the door panel. And this is okay, I mean like, I, the, the important thing was I was able to lower my position a little bit, but I do feel a little bit more snug here. And as far as like pedal placement goes, my knees are bent a little bit more in order to hit these. I can still heel toe very easily in this car. It has proper pedal placement, but I would just say that the S2000 was just a little bit more thought out for like enthusiast driving. Um, other than that, I think as far as me, I would dare say that the NB is maybe a little bit more elegant on the inside, but it, the S2000 is definitely a little bit more sports car driver focused. So now, let's talk about the powertrains. NB Miata, 
stock powertrain is a 1.8 liter, makes 140 crank horsepower, uh, torque is some, but and it revs to about 7,000 RPM stock. If you guys know my setup, uh, I tried to push the stock block as far as I possibly could without building it, kind of trying to make this into an S2000 competitive power powertrain. Uh, now makes 185 horsepower at the wheels and 134 pound-feet of torque. I race this car up against the stock AP1 S2000, I can beat it by three quarters to a car. Once you get to about 100 mile an hour plus, the aero and the higher horsepower of the AP1 S2000 give it a slight nudge and it just has that little bit extra power to push the air better than the NB Miata, but this is slightly faster than the stock S2000 and its current trim. It did take a great deal of work, naturally aspirated to get it there but with forced induction solutions, you can easily make a Miata faster than an S2000. Um, the S2000's powertrain is a two liter if it's an AP1, a 2.2 liter if it's an AP2. Um, both are rated at 240 crank horsepower. They dyno around 200 to 215 at the wheels, wow. depending if it's the two, two liter or the 2.2. Uh, my AP1 is still a two liter. It makes 232 wheel horsepower, and I wanna say torque was 148 pound feet. Um, driving these cars back to back, there is an inherent difference in the characteristics and the feel of this engine, the F20C. Um, I said this before and I'll say this again, Honda makes the best naturally aspirated production four cylinders like just about out of anybody. Um, I love their powertrains, they are super, super exciting. Uh, they really provide that true sports car feel. This motor revving the 7800 RPM is not nearly as smooth um, as the S2000s is at 9000, but you can just feel the difference in the characteristics. The S2000 uses very lightweight engine internals. The, the stock connecting rods are forged. Uh, the pistons are forged. They're very small and narrow, which makes them lighter. All the valve train components, everything is just super lightweight in the S2000. The block's aluminum, the head's aluminum. The Miata uses an iron block, so it's a heavier motor. Um, the compression's lower in the Miata. The heads don't flow nearly as well as the Honda stuff. Um, plus, you have VTEC in the S2000. And for those of you who don't understand VTEC, what VTEC essentially is, like everybody makes the jokes about VTEC, but I will say this, VTEC, is one of the coolest systems ever. And, he, and here's why. If those of you who watch videos on my NB Miata, I have two 64 degree intake and exhaust cams. You hear a very lumpy idle. Um, which is cool. It's cool for like street cred, but that lumpy idle means that uh, it has to idle higher where it's happy. So this car idles around 1100 RPM. And the reason is, is because when you increase duration of the camshafts, you get overlap of your intake and exhaust. And what that does is it bleeds out compression. Uh, bleeding out compression means that you're losing power. Now, when the engine's spinning fast, you could take advantage of that overlap and it doesn't really matter as much because the engine's spinning faster. So when you add aftermarket camshafts, you kind of shift the power band higher up, you make more power, but it's, it's up top at the cost of lower end. So I've lost low end power and torque in my NB Miata because of those camshafts, because they're just fixed cams. Um, I have adjustable cam gears and they're fixed in their position. The beauty of VTEC is that there's three lobes on, on, the, on each cam for the, for, the, for the valves. So you have two, uh, four valves per cylinder, two intake, two exhaust. You have your normal cam lobes that give you a proper idle because there's less overlap and they give you around the town drivability. Your VTEC lobe uh, locks in under oil pressure. 
and, it, and it's basically like adding an aggressive race cam optimized for the higher RPM. So stock, the VTEC changeover point is 6,000. Um, and that's why people are like, oh, VTEC kicked in. You can tune that out so it's, it's more of a smooth transition. My VTEC engages at 4,500 RPM or 4,000, I can't remember. It's one or the other. Um, but you have your race, your race cam and you could take advantage of that increased duration and lift up top where it really matters, but you still have a mild cam low for around the town drivability and a nice smooth idle. So this thing idles and drives like a stock car. Uh, without any of the drawbacks of the lumpier cans. You don't get that cool brappy idle, but this car performs and it's just much easier to drive from idle and in a low RPM cruise than this car is. There's a little bit of a trade-off there. Um, so between the two powertrains, uh, S2000 wins hands down. These motors are freaking awesome. Uh, Miata is just a typical run-of-the-mill motor. You know, both both have proven their reliability and have you know. There's many documented cases of 200,000 plus mile an hour motor, uh, mile motors. I do think that it's pretty amazing that Honda built such a high RPM application that can go over 100,000 miles with these. That's truly truly impressive. If you built in a BP motor to do 9,000 RPM, you are definitely not doing 100,000 miles on it if you actually drive the car hard. Gearbox, both are great. Uh, S2000 is a six-speed stock, NV Miata, most of them are five-speed. There was some optional six-speeds. Uh, Mazda has always been known for their good, easy-to-use gearboxes. S2000 gearbox is probably one of the best gearboxes in the world. Um, I'm just going to say it. I love it. Um, so I'm going to put the win to the S2000. As far as chassis go, the S2000 is a more rigid chassis, so it wins in that department. But the, S, uh, the, the Miata is a much lighter chassis. So the biggest Achilles heel of the S2000 is its weight. For a naturally aspirated 2 or 2.2 liter four cylinder, depending on what you have, this is a heavy car. AP1s are around 2,750 pounds, and AP2s are 20, just like low 2,800 pound range. It's kind of too fat of a, of a car for, for, for that anemic of a motor on torque. Um, so there is a little bit of a trade-off there. When these cars are in the power vans, they are not slow cars. They do get up and move pretty well. The Miata though has a almost 500 plus pound weight advantage. I can't remember what an NB is stock. I want to say it's like, like low 2300 and change. Mine sits at 2230. So. You know, the, the old saying is, is that if you want to go faster in a straight line, add power, but if you want to go faster in all aspects, including stopping faster, you know, add lightness. So in that department, the Miata wins in the weight department, but the S2000 wins in the chassis rigidity apartment, but I will say an NA or NB Miata with a roll bar stiffens them up quite a bit, and plus it acts as a safety thing, so it kind of makes the rigidity almost close to even. Uh, as far as running cost goes, I'm gonna give the nudge to the Miata. It uses small wheels, small tires, small brakes. The, the parts are generally less expensive. Even aftermarket offerings are less expensive for the Miata platform. So for like a budget track day warrior, the Miata is a great car to go with. Both of these cars are very track capable out of the box. All they need is a set of brake pads and maybe a set of tires. And you can literally go on their stock suspensions if you wanted to. Although on a Miata, I would say a coilover upgrade is more warranted than the S2000 because the S2000 is pretty aggressive uh, spring rate stock. Um, so at the end of the day, I think I covered kind of all our topics here, but at the end of the day, uh, both cars are awesome cars. It really comes down to what's your budget, what do you want to do, and what are you looking for? If you want that all motor horsepower, um, the S2000 is a great platform to start with because you have that exhilarating motor. You're going to be working for it on the Miata if you want something to have more of that experience like that. Um, if you're on a budget and you want to go do track time or you want to learn how to drive rear wheel drive, I would say the Miata is a much more forgiving, much cheaper platform to run and this would be the car to start with. If you can swing an S2000 from a collector standpoint, the, S the S2000s are shooting up in value and they're only going to keep getting more expensive. NB Miatas are still relatively cheap um, and they haven't started appreciating yet. The NAs are. 
you're going to spend more money for an NA Miata now than you would have five years ago. And these are still relatively good buys. So, you know, there is probably more of an immediate collector, collector's value, collectability with the S2000 platform if you can get into one now. So, that's what I have to say about these cars. I know that was a bit of a loaded question, but obviously I love them both. So I chose both and both of these are going to remain in my garage for the rest of my life until I die, unless Ryan steals them one night when I'm sleeping. So that's it for this one, guys. If you like these types of videos, let us know and make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications. Thank you so much for tuning in till next time.